Welcome to the Pocatello Business Podcast, the only Pocatello podcast focused on providing profits for Pocatello people. If you love our town and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Pocatello Business Podcast with your friend, host, all-around great guy, and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. All right, everyone, we are back again with another episode of Pocatello Business Podcast. We are here. You may recognize her. Her name is Pauline Theoros. She is the athletic director at Idaho State University. Um, Pauline is a Pocatello native. She went to Pocatello High School. Uh, she went on to play volleyball at Idaho State University and then has stayed there ever since, uh, teaching coaching and now being an athletic director she was once a long time ago my teacher for some of my pr classes she probably was happy to get me out of those classes because i was probably a troublemaker and you were uh, awesome spencer you were <laughs> always awesome <laughs> but i'm um, happy to have her on the show today but so so pauline tell us about yourself tell us about your you know yourself your hobbies and, and just kind of give us a little introduction that that I maybe left out. Sure. Well, no, I, I am. I'm a Pocatello native and uh, I, I bleed orange and black and I always have even long before uh, becoming director of athletics. But uh, I, I love our community and university. That's for sure one very important thing about me. I do love the sport of volleyball. I played a lot of years. I coached a lot of years. And I think, uh, you know, being with student athletes and working with them is probably just one of the most rewarding things ever. And I always said, you know, I loved competing as a player. And you get to a certain point when your your body just can't quite do that anymore. And so you need to keep that competitive uh, juice flowing. And so coaching is the next best thing. And then I guess at a point when you're done coaching, man, I, I needed a new drug. And here I am athletic director keeps the, the uh, you've got to be competitive and doing this job as well. But uh, I have two kids. My daughter Zoe uh, is also a volleyball player. She plays uh, at Gonzaga and my son Constantine, he goes to Grace Lutheran High School. He's a swimmer and a basketball player and uh, loves to go fishing and hunting and all those wonderful things that we enjoy in Idaho. So uh, as for the rest of my life and what I like to do for fun, Spencer, this is it. I do whatever the Bengals need me to be doing, and uh, I am always with them and always focused on uh, our success as an athletic department and on the experience of our student athletes. That is what I do for work. It's what I do for fun. It's what matters to me most. I love it. I did just see the opening of the Davis Field, the reopening of Davis Field. That was amazing looking. That was awesome. You know, that was such a cool project. And for me, it was one that was so symbolic. Um, here we had been with this historic venue that was in disrepair. And really, we were just unable to use it for so many years. It was such, I think, a disservice to our student athletes and, and the wrong message to our community and our students about what's important. And so it was really important to me and, and to our president and our administration at ISU to make that thing happen because, yeah. uh, you know, where would we be and how hard would, be, would we be thinking about solving a problem if we couldn't play a home football game in Holt Arena? I know we'd fix that because that's what our student athletes and our fans deserve. And it was no different with Davis. So I think finishing that venue and finding a way to get it done was a real a uh, testament to, you know, how we're going to make decisions and, and what's going to be important to us. So we're really proud of that because it's a cool place. If you haven't been there, the branding is awesome. Every detail was really considered, but it's also really symbolic of kind of a new day. I love it. Fixing the eye above it and everything else. We've just got a good little situation going on over there. So that's perfect. Absolutely. I love the eye too. You know, our students designed it with the help of a faculty member Oh, really? um, and also a, a, a local engineering firm, but um, very cool to have that up there on the hill again. Yeah, I'm glad that's that remained. So, well, Pauline, uh, I'm sure everyone is thinking, you know, they may have an idea of what an athletic director does. Um, 
but I, I know there's a lot more than just uh, making sure that the teams are on the field and, and the coaches are, are hired and, and tell us a little bit about kind of what you're doing over there at Idaho State. Well, my, my goodness, we've been focused obviously um, uh, on making sure that we're keeping our student athletes safe in this pandemic has lately been mm -hmm. obviously a huge consideration. So a lot of communication with our colleagues in the big sky. Uh, I'm the chair of the Olympic Sports Committee, which is really cool most of the time until you have 13 sports to reschedule and figure out protocols for. And, and that's been a heavy lift in, in concert with colleagues in the Big Sky Conference, but we're getting it done. Um, but really as a, a role in athletics, we've been focusing so hard on our culture the last three years and making sure that we're recruiting the right kids and we're having the right goals in place in our department. And we're really building a culture of excellence where you do everything right hundred out of a hundred times. We've been fixing processes. We've been really fixing maybe the way we think about what we can achieve and accomplish at Idaho State. And we've been asking for support in all of those things. And man, has our community ever been answering uh, that call for support. Uh, obviously, we spent a huge amount of time working with our budget. We found some sources of revenue just in time really a couple of years ago that elevated uh, the work that we were doing with the state board and, and, and what we were getting in appropriations, what we were getting from students, and then of course how we were spending and how we were stewarding what, we, what we've got to spend. So a lot of budget reallocation has been in the mix over the last couple of years and I think we like how that feels and what we've been able to accomplish. And you know, a, a lot of changes uh, later, I think that in the department right now, we're feeling really good with the relationships we have and, and with the trajectory all our programs are on. I love it. I love it how you talked about, you know, fixing processes and stuff, because I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I can attest and I'm sure the community can attest, but once you've taken over as athletic director, I, I don't know, I feel like there's more school spirit. There's more camaraderie around the community with within you know the ISU area, uh, and I think you guys are just doing a lot better job marketing. Everything's just looking better over there. It just I got to hand it to you. It looks everything just seems to be flowing. So. Well, thank you. Well, it's been a great team effort. You know, our team in athletics has been amazing to work with. I love um, uh, our staff. Is I can't tell you how dynamite our staff in athletics is, but. We've also worked really hard with other campus departments, I think really closely. And I think my background coming from another part of the university has been helpful in that. But we have some really talented people in university marketing and in student affairs and even across our faculty that we've kind of reached out and engaged them in what we're doing. And man, when that happens, you can really make things sing. Yeah, I love it. Well, perfect. So you said you're, you're, you had to reschedule. It looks like we're still going to have football coming up in the 2021, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play a six-game schedule starting uh, in the end of February on the 27th. We have home openers with Weber State and University of Idaho, so we'll be ready to rock and roll. Oh, that'd be awesome. There's a bye in the middle of the season and a bye at the end of the season. So uh, Very nice. That'll give us an opportunity to make up any games that we might have to miss and, and still be able to uh, be considered for a, a playoff spot. Good. And it's probably good that the boys uh, basketball team is no longer playing in the Holt Arena because that would conflict a little bit. <laughs> yeah, it certainly wouldn't be doable right now, but for a whole bunch of reasons that, that uh, really helped us. I think it was not coincidental that after we made the move to Reed Gym, we had a significantly higher performance in our track and field uh, indoor program because they had a place to practice. It turns out a place to practice is kind of important to how you perform. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine. I'd imagine so. Well, perfect. What are, what are some of the things that you um, that you're dealing with that um, talking about process and, processes and, and other things that are internal that uh, maybe the community doesn't know about or things that you uh, felt like is a uh, turning point for for the athletic department, um, I'm hoping I'm wording this right. I'm just wondering, you know, what are, the, what are those things that you feel like are differentiators that you've and your team have brought to the table since you've been in there? Well, 
you know, there's there's a lot of things that we've been that we've been trying to do. Uh, we're really tr being intentional with our coaches, though, in in creating a culture across our department, and and that's not so much a process, but I think it's one of the most important things that we've been working on. We've been trying to build this culture of excellence uh, and accountability and and resilience, and. Uh, we've made coaches very accountable for their budgets. We've given them a lot of say in what they're going to look like, and we're letting them have control of them, but they are definitely accountable for that come the end of the year. Um, and they're working hard in areas like fundraising and really being creative in other ways to generate revenue. And there's this team approach in our culture right now that's how can we uh, increase our revenues? How can we work together? to make every, sure everybody's having a great experience, our student athletes and our fans, um, to really get where we need to go. And then also just building a culture around the things that are gonna be important to us, You know what our guiding principles are that we're making our decisions based on. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's centered around the student athlete and their needs. And we're very, very focused on, uh, not on just living within the structure that is our fate at Idaho State University, which is really what I felt like early on was happening. Um, now we're living with our vision focused on where do we wanna be and how do we get there? And just like Davis Field happening, we found a way and now we're right. looking to find a way for other, uh, uh, other facilities and we're getting there. So that culture has been a big one. It's important for every institution and we're no different to uh, work on you know, compliance processes and, and having sound things in place so that you have a sixth man, so to speak, mm -hmm. that isn't a person. It's a solid process. And mm -hmm. our uh, our staff has done a really good job putting those types of checks and balances in place. And it makes us feel really confident in, in the things that we're doing. Um, and just in the way that we're uh, thinking about our content and our social media and our marketing and we're working together with the bigger resources on campus to make those things cohesive and for us to be a platform for Idaho State University and for all of the branding and marketing resources ISU has to be a great tool for us. So the collaboration and the culture are the things that have been foremost in our mind. I love it. You know, within, within our, you know, my business personally and within uh, the podcast, we've talked a lot about culture and core values of, of organizations and, and trying to attract people that share those core values and that culture. You know, when it comes to coaches, you know, you're, you're hiring very strong personalities. How, how are you finding, uh, is that something that's important to you guys to find those kind of coaches that share that, that those core values or the culture that you're trying to cultivate within ISU? Yeah, that is. I mean, that has been the, a key component of what we've tried to hire, and we've hired a, a few coaches, but we've tried to get high character, high value, high energy, high positivity people. And I think that there are a lot of um, opportunities to hire, hire people with a lot of Division One experience that are, you know, have been at a lot of places, but if that doesn't come with with high character and a vision to do what we want to do here, it's not really going to help. So we've hired some uh, people who are first time division one head coaches. And I'll tell you what, I love their culture. I love what they're bringing from another level where different things are important because I'm a huge believer that um, building that strong, good, positive culture with the right kind of people on your roster, the right kind of students on your roster is going to lead to uh, good things happening in the win column. And uh, so I'm pretty happy with our roster of new coaches. They're building programs in the right way. And the level of just communication between all of us and staying on the same page, it's really high and it feels really, really good. I love it. You talked about processes and, and automating systems and, and making things easier and more automatic. Um, but I think when it comes to when, when you're hiring right and you have the people that share those core values and that culture, I think I feel like those kind of things just kind of fall into place because you're all on the same on the same road and the same track and you're all just having that same goal in mind. And I, in the past, I, I've seen employees and, and people within other organizations that you 
you, you, you seem to have to like spell everything out for them. But it turns out to be that they're not really a culture match or a core value match. And that's the reason you're having to spell out all these little different things. But if you just hired the, the right person the first time and, and uh, it just seems to go a lot smoother. So I, I think that's, that's perfect. Yeah, I, I, so we're having a good experience in terms of working together. And, you know, our head coaches are, uh, they're not just coaches, they're part of our leadership team in, mm -hmm. in athletics, and they have tremendous contributions to offer in terms of the best ways for us to, to do things. And so they always have a voice. And I think that feels good to us. And it feels good to our head coaches as well. I like it. Now you talk a lot about budgets as well. Like, you know, within a normal business, you know, everyone has you, everyone has got budgets and, and uh, you, you, everyone wants to know their numbers, but you have, you know, how many, how many athletics department, you know, how many different sports are you running right now over there? Sure. We, we've got 15 teams and, and 15 Holy sports cow. budgets and auxiliary budgets. So there's a, a, a little bit of time spent with, <laughs> yeah, uh, just, it, just in bit. the old Excel spreadsheet for sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's that would be a uh, that would be a full time job on its own right there, just making sure that things are in line there. Because every every sport is pretty much a business, right? You you have to make sure it's ran, you make sure you can afford scholarships, make sure you know pe you know people stay happy, and you yeah, know, people are definitely. coming to buy tickets. So yeah, subunit's one big business, and and it's been an interesting year for that because you know our revenue sources are so diverse. Um, you know, if you're looking sure. at a budget that is uh, approximately 12 or 13 million dollars in a year uh, we get between four and five of that from the state in any given year all of the rest has to come from revenue and fundraising hmm. and so the money games that you schedule the attendance the media rights all of those things are extremely important in, in putting that together. So when you create a budget for next year, you got that revenue target, that revenue budget, you got the expense budget, and they really need to marry, marry well. And of course, this year, um, so many of those sources of revenue have been compromised sure. all the way from, um, you know, NCAA distributions to attendance to the absence of money games. Uh, thankfully, a lot of expenses of travel and other things yeah. have been reduced thus far, but we're facing those in the spring. So managing our budget, being fiscally responsible and getting the correct help from our um, boosters and fans who sure. have been absolutely amazing has been really critical for us. Well, that's that. And that, and this is your first kind of full year as the athletic director, right? In 2001. Uh, you know, yeah. It's second full year behind okay. me. So going, going into year three and, um, okay. so, so yeah. it's just, a, and one of these years has been absolutely different from any year. I hope oh, we ever goodness. experience again. Yes. Yeah. I can completely understand that one. So no, that's, that's, that's great. I love to, I just love to hear about, you know, different positions, different organizations. And I think people will get a lot out of this because we love ISU and we want to continue to support it. Do you, um, do you, is there anything that um, as the community, community we can do to, uh, to increase more uh, camaraderie and team spirit and uh, just community support, I guess, for you guys up there besides just well, not buying tickets and. Yeah, it, it's, I wish I could have everybody buying tickets right now. There's no yeah. shortage of a desire to buy tickets. That's for yeah. sure. Uh, the inability is on my end to deliver them right now, but I'll tell you what, I have been so um, uplifted by the response of our boosters and our fans. We had a lot of people buy season football tickets back when we all expected we might be playing in the fall, uh, and most of those people were really content to, to turn those tickets over into a contribution or to let them ride. And that has been really important. You know, the revenue hit sure. in terms of those season tickets has not been nearly what you would expect. So just their patience and waiting to see what's coming next has been great on the part of the, of the community. Um, a high level of participation that we've had in, in things like the town hall Zooms that we've done and some of the Zoom calls we've done with our alumni has been so encouraging to see a huge response to those and to see so many faces on the screen who are engaged and asking 
questions of coach or, or a student athlete. And that just lets our department and our student athletes know, you know, we're not alone. It's a huge source of strength and encouragement to, to have those partnerships and just the engagement. You know, when we opened Davis Field yesterday, I think we've had thousands of views already on the, on the ribbon cutting that I would never have uh, fully expected. But just that level of engagement, the email communication, the social media engagement, and quite frankly, the enormous response we had to our recent campaign. We just had a campaign called Prepare to Roar. We ran it for two weeks. It was almost entirely online, inviting people to make a gift to the sports club of your choice. And we had hoped that with a, a couple of, if we could achieve a couple of big gifts that we might be able to raise in the neighborhood of $100,000 in two weeks. Now, uh, well, we, we got there in a couple of days and we thought, do we raise the goal to 150? What are we, we got a couple of weeks left. And so we raised the goal to 250 and then we blew by that. Wow. And this is, you know, Bengal country coming out to say, uh, we just want to help. We want you to be prepared for a vertical recovery when this thing is over. So uh, what more can our community do to support us? You know, just keep doing what you're doing. And now when we open the doors, uh, we just want you there with us cheering on the Bengals. That's right. I'll, hey, I'll be there with the tailgate and I'll be ready to rock and roll. So, <laughs> well, cool. We appreciate you uh, taking the time out um, with us today. I do need to take a quick sponsorship time out. We forgot to do one in the beginning, but it's not a big deal. Let's do it real quick right now. And then we'll get to your final couple questions and we'll be, uh, we'll be done with this. All right. Well, everyone knows Pocatello Business Podcast is sponsored by Dell's Outdoor Advertising. These guys are great. Um, you know, Pauline, she's all about PR, some advertising. She knows all about this top of mind awareness uh, and about, I think she was one of the ones that talked about, uh, maybe, maybe it was, but I know you know that the billboards don't make them too wordy. People make them too wordy. They make them neutral colors. They blend in. You got to have one call to action, six to eight words. Make it good. Call call Rob today at 232-6886. He will give you your first month for free or your installation for free if you sign up with a three-month deal with Dell's Out, Outdoor Advertising. We are also sponsored by Pack and Go. Uh, these guys are amazing. If you need to move uh, your, your office or your home to another location, they'll drop a, a convenient pod that's ground level. You have all the time in the world to load it and unload it. And uh, we're using it right now to remodel a house. We're just... We're, we're, uh, we're unloading it right now. I, I think my wife's going to make me do it after this episode. So <laughs> they're, they're wonderful to deal with. If you need just to store stuff, they, they're also there to help. Call Darren at 208-339-2229. And if you mention the Biz, uh, Pocatello Business Podcast, uh, you will get one month for free with a three-month rental. So Pauline, uh, back to you. Um, those people that are listening to this and thinking, you know, I want to do my part. I want to, you know, uh, to donate or, or get ready for the upcoming season for some season tickets. What's the best way to get a hold of, of, of not maybe you, because you're not the one that you want to be talking to, but maybe how do they do that? Well, the, the easiest way to get it done is to uh, jump online and go to isubengals.com and click on the button that says give now. Perfect. And you can support any uh, type of a scholarship or independent sport that you want to support in that way. And I'll tell you what, uh, those are the funds, Spencer, that uh, everybody knows that excellent programs are not built on, on the baseline of state funding. They're built on what your, your private donors and constituents are willing to chip in on top of it. And, and we're, it's proving to be um, a very good thing for us right now that we have such good friends in Bengal country. So isubengals.com and give now. Perfect. I love it. Okay, guys. Um, Pauline, we always like to ask this last question at the end of, of every episode, but what is one of your favorite local restaurants to visit and eat at? You know, I'll tell you what, there's so many, but um, I've been down to the, uh, the new brewery that is uh, opened up by one of our, our, our great Bengals, and I'm, I'm all about off the rails. I love it. In fact, oh, I'm probably nice. going to go by there tonight. I love it. Well, perfect. Well, thanks again for being on the show with us. Hopefully we can get you on the show again later. 
But uh, wish you all the luck for the upcoming season. And uh, everyone else listening, support the Bengals. And until we see you next time, keep listening to the Poke Business Podcast. Congratulations on spending a couple minutes getting just a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Pocatello business community. If you are feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.